Hello everyone, in today's video we will have a look at using 3D text in the world space. We'll be using the new Action Pack 1 actions in order to make this more dynamic. In order to do this we will need Unity, Game Creator and the Action Pack 1 asset. Before we start I would like to thank all of my Patreon supporters for the absolutely amazing support. Now for this scene I've set up something really basic, so we have our player, we have a couple of high objects in order to jump over, it's not actually challenging, it's just supposed to give the impression it is, and we have our normal plane. I made this red, as in red is not good, don't jump on it basically. So let's start off with creating a empty here. So we're going to create an empty. Let's rename this and call it on game start. There we go. I'm going to drag this a bit here. It doesn't that doesn't actually matter. I just want it to be somewhere where I'll drop the text as well. So I'm going to go to 3D objects and text mesh pro. Now if you do not have this installed let me show you where to get it. So we go to the package manager. And once this is done loading, we will have Text Mesh Pro here. Now, when I created a new project in Unity 2019, it was installed by default. So I didn't need to do anything, but yeah. If for some reason it doesn't work for you or it's not installed by default, just make sure it's downloaded. So there we go. So let's do that again, 3D objects and text mesh pro. Now this will give us our text, really fancy stuff here. Just wonderful. So this is our normal text. So. I'm going to change this to, are you ready? Now we have a couple of options here. So one of the easiest thing here is turn off wrapping, turn off overflow. Now why use Text Mesh Pro in general? There's, well, it's a good question really. Um, you have a bit more options when it comes to fonts, so you can add more fonts to this. So it gives you a bit more, bit more options here. You have these types of effects, so in the world space. So as you can see, are you ready? Looks really, really nice here. You have the outline option, and yeah, if you're using HDRP, these options are, by the way, pretty different. Just gonna see if this would work. Now one, two. Now I was actually looking forward to doing that, but apparently that's not really an option here. Anyway, we're just going to keep it like this. But yeah, Text Mesh Pro gives you a bit more options. Um, we have these here as well, so as you can see, you can make a text blurrier or softer however you want to call it um, yeah it gives you a bit more options we have an outline option here so thickness you can add an outline to it really nice underlay yeah basically you have a couple more options but cool so we have it set up like this so that's that's all good here uh, let's just keep it like that going to drag it in our on game start so I'm going to create another one so 3d and then text mesh pro I'm going to drag it in here as well so let me rename this to ready and where are you and there you go all nicely aligned together all good so this one will be something we're actually going to do something with so i'm not going to touch the text um, you can obviously resize it if you want different sizes but i'm not going to do anything here just going to make sure it's all nice and centered 
and yeah that's that's it really nothing else so let me drag that up and there we go so I'm going to add a set of uh, I'm going to add a trigger here on start and we're going to have some actions there we go so on start what we are going to do is we're going to wait for two seconds then I'm going to use set active here I'm going to drag in this one is going to be turned off should have duplicated first duplicate this one drag in this one and this will be turned on so really simple after two seconds that will be turned on now I also want the character to not be controllable so I'm going to do a simple change here so we have to look at the text we can still move the camera obviously but this is something that should happen from the start so from the start character is not controllable so we can look around camera is still functional just not the player itself we have these two seconds and then something's going to happen so in our action pack we have timer so we have our 3d timer so I'm going to drag in this text here the default value um, yeah let's do six mix it up from five and then once this is done we can call on new actions as well and I'm actually going to do that just to demonstrate how this works so let's create a new group of actions here I'm going to do <clears throat> what are we going to do actually we're going to change which one was it change all there we go so drag in that same text mesh pro object and we're actually going to create some new text so this will be go I think the text was 36 aligned with center and it's going to be green there we go green for go so we're using the same object here so we don't actually need to create a new one which is pretty cool and we're going to wait one second and we're going to turn it off again and we're going to make the player controllable so really simple set of actions nothing all too exciting but let's see how it actually plays out so we have our text i can't move counts down from six <laughs> no really big change and it doesn't actually become green so i made a mistake here and um, what was that meant? Oh, I didn't drag in the actions. So let's let's do that again. So yay, countdown starts. And once the countdown is finished, it's going to call those actions, make it green, and we can walk. So yeah, really, really simple, really easy to use, and pretty fun. Now there's a lot more we can do, so you know I used a counter here because given the context it just makes sense but we can actually do some other things as well so let's actually give that a go so we have our actions here and this was display 3d timer and action great I'm going to remove that and we're going to go back to the action pack settings and we're going to add a clock and I'm going to drag in that object and we're going to press play are you ready and it shows the time and yes this is my time so if you look at my system time that's actually the time it is over here so yeah correct um, you have the option to add uh, seconds as well of course so yeah pretty straightforward don't overthink it does exactly what it's supposed to do and we have rotate I'm not really sure what that's going to do but let's just give it a go 
drag in this object, look at player. Let's actually remove this because it will rotate towards the player and let's see what actually happens. No offset. Okay. Um, before we do that, let's actually remove all the other texts. Let's just make this visible. Makes a lot more sense because we're no longer in a countdown. Remove these actions as well. And let's just see what this text actually does. So we have the on start. It's going to rotate towards look at the player. So let's give that a go. And it doesn't do much and that makes a lot of sense and let's actually add a restart here so it continuously does this otherwise not a lot is going to happen and yeah that's actually well looks really smooth actually so really easy thing similar to what i did with the health bars for example for our enemies so it will rotate towards the player and turn around and yeah, just make sure it's on a loop, obviously, because it needs to update. But yeah, that's actually pretty nice. So there you have it, a couple of easy examples. I know this wasn't a long tutorial, but it's just to show that you can do a lot of cool stuff with Text Mesh Pro in general. And combining this with the Action Pack allows for a lot of new, new ways to do things. So that's pretty useful. Now, if you look at racing games, for example, they'll all have something like this. So the countdown before the race starts, text change, etc. So really useful if you're going to use something like that. Now, there is actually, now that I think of it, there is actually a update to the module. So let's actually install that as well. There we go. So I've actually just installed the update. Now this is not a module, so it's a lot easier to perform the update. Just literally hit update and import. So that's pretty nice. So let's actually have a look at everything we have in here. Now I'm going to add a new object here. So let's just create a simple cube here, not to complicate things that much. So we have our simple object here. And let's have a look. So, not sure why I removed that on start, but let's just add that again. Rename on start. Trigger, and let's call in those actions. There we go. So now if we go to action pack one, there will be a couple more options. So we have rotate object by degree and scale object by value in here as well. So let's have a look at what this does. So we're going to drag in, what cube is this actually? This is cube three, I'm going to drag that in. Let's do 10, 10, and 10. And time to arrive, let's make this, I don't know, in five seconds. And now we're just gonna keep it like that. Doesn't need to, let's actually do return object as well. Let's give this a go. Oh, so this is scale, this was not rotate. <laughs> And it kicks me off. Okay, so that's pretty cool. It works, obviously, not what I was expecting. Wasn't paying attention. I thought this was going to rotate here instead of scale. So let's actually drag this a bit further and see what happens then.
scales up and then it scales down. That's actually really awesome. That's really nice. It's a lot better than what I expected it to do. So let's make sure we're not getting kicked off again and let's add rotate object by degree in here as well. So we're going to grab the same object here and I'm going to turn off return object. There's no need for that. And let's add these values. So I'm going to add 10, 10 and same five seconds and 10. I'm not really sure they will run at the same time if they're part of the same action. So in order to avoid any mistakes, I'm just going to copy this over and add a new action here. There we go. That's better. So let me drag in this one and let's see what happens. And it rotates. Well, this is a really small rotation, obviously but it rotates at the same time. That's actually really cool. That's a nice way to dynamically actually shape your environments in real time in your game. Really awesome. I know this had nothing to do with the TechSmash Pro actions, but I just thought of this update, so wanted to give it a go. But yeah, this is actually pretty cool. It's a really nice way to, while well, in-game, be able to dynamically shape your environment. Really nice. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit like and subscribe and I will see you next time.